March of the Machine Aftermath gave us a new Nissa. For 3 mana, whenever our land enters the battlefield, we get a mana of any color. If we can trigger this ability again, not only do we get another mana, but we flip the top card of our library until we hit an elemental or elf and put it into our hand. This paired alongside a fetch land makes it both easy to ramp to find some explosive elementals and to close out the game. I discovered this decklist when Twitter user YoungDingo topped for the biggest online modern tournament last week so I thought I would copy his 75 to see how his deck plays out. There's nothing better to do now than to actually test Nyssa and see if it's good. To start the first round, I kept a somewhat risky hand because they had 5 lands and 2 removal spells, but this turned out to pay off because the opponent was on the meta 5 color domain zoo deck. This deck relies on playing Sign of Draco and other creatures and cards that care about having land types in play, and as you can see by this decklist, they generally rely on a lot of creatures to win the game, with some value spells like Stubborn Denial and Leyline Binding to interact with the opponent. But with the opponent attacking with their Sign of Draco, and me having a Beseju, and a Leyline Binding for their follow-up creature, we did not need a Nyssa to win this game because we found a Teferi Time Raveler off the top to make the opponent untap with an empty board on turn 4. Now if you thought this couldn't get any better for me, well it does, because on turn 6 I managed to slam an Elish Nort. This is in the deck because it doubles the triggers and enter the battlefield effects from all of our elementals, Nyssa, and also Omnath. So here by just playing one land, the Omnath triggers twice, which means we now get the mana, 4 life, can play Renin 6, ping the Ragavan, and Prismatic Ending the Territorial Kavu, leaving the opponent with nothing on the board again, and me with 4 very powerful permanents. With the opponent not being able to catch up, they concede and we move on to game 2 where we will actually use Nyssa and see its power. Going into sideboarding first, Elish Norn doesn't seem that good against the opponent, so I'm boarding that out and bringing in some dress down and engineered explosives. Going into the second game, we yet again have a land heavy hand but with two good removal spells. Lightning Bolt is great here because we did see Ragavan in the first game, but while the opponent doesn't have it on turn 1, we can use it to kill other creatures later on in the game. And with a Teferi Time Raveler off the top, we're going to be playing a very reactive game plan while the opponent plays their creatures. So here, it's very good for us because the opponent plays a 5-3, which we can easily bolt. I decided on their end step to not bolt because we didn't have a 2 drop in hand that we wanted to cast and I wanted to have better mana. But my deck instantly punishes me by finding a red and 6 off the top, so we can't cast that because it'll die, so I have to bolt the card on their turn. Things don't look too great for us when we bolt the brawler at the beginning of combat and the opponent follows up with a sign of Draco and a Ragavan. Not having too many options, I decide to bounce the sign of Draco to their hand with the Teferi Time Raveler and hope that they attack it with the Ragavan. As the opponent attacks him with their Ragavan and plays some more creatures, I want to highlight that we top deck Eladomri's Call. This is a great card in the deck because it lets us search for any creature card so we can either find an Evoke Elemental, something like Omnath, or even more specifically, Anissa. With the opponent having 3 creatures on the board, I can actually wipe the battlefield. With a Renin 6 to ping the Ragavan, a Dress Down to make the Territorial Kavu a 0-0 because it loses all abilities, and a Solitude, I can exile all the creatures and have a load of Planeswalkers. Now that would cost me my whole hand, so here I just decide to ping the Ragavan and pass back the turn and see what they're gonna do. With an invasion of Tarkir before combat to kill my Renin 6, I decide to dress down at the beginning of combat to kill the Kavu and let the sign of Draco kill my Teferi Time Raveler. Now it's important to note, while I did draw an Eladomri's Call off the top and I can evoke the Solitude, the Solitude won't do anything when it enters the battlefield because I have a dress down in play. This is good for me because on my next turn I'll have 5 mana so I can hard cast the Solitude to continue to try and keep the board as clear as possible. With the opponent putting Gigantha into their hand, and a Teferi Time Raveler off the top, I can now bounce the sign of Draco and have 2 mana up to cast Eladomri's Call at the end of their turn. Now with the opponent tapping out for Gigantha, I can Eladomri's Call for an Omnath, play that, draw a card, play my fetch land and fetch to get loads of mana, play my Solitude, and kill the Gigantha. While it looks like I'm clearly winning, the opponent has both a Lightning Bolt and Leyline's Binding to wipe the board, and makes Nyssa a very good card here. With the Leyline Binding off the top, we get Eladomri's Call for the Nyssa, play the Nyssa, play our Leyline Binding, get back our Omnath, play our Fetch Land, Fetch, and then both trigger our cards twice. 
Ah, yeah, I forgot to mention in the introduction, Nyssa also gets an elf or an elemental, and Nyssa itself is an elf. So that's why we only play three copies in the deck, because you hope you don't hit it with the trigger. So in this case, it doesn't really matter what we hit because we have the Fury, but there are some downsides to this card. Now, did Nyssa single-handedly win this game in match? No way. Did it help me win? Possibly but I think the power and the shell of four color control really carried in this matchup because the opponent was on a creature deck. So why don't we look at a matchup where we're not favored and it's not a creature deck and see how Nyssa can perform. Now to no one's surprise, the four color deck didn't need Nyssa for the next three rounds. In my second round, I beat Team of Rhinos, focusing on my counter spells from my sideboard and my powerful removal spells in the main to both suppress their Rhinos and attack them for lethal. Then in the third round, again, Merfolk, I didn't need the Nissas because I was just removing the Aether Vials, removing their creatures, and didn't have enough time to do that before the opponent conceded the games. In the fourth round though, I actually had to sideboard out the Nissas because it was too slow against Blue Red Prowess. It was an unfortunate loss though because the opponent managed to chain an expressive iteration and a light up the stage with no cards in hand to win the match. So having three wins and one loss, we're going into the final round and hoping that we can actually play with Nissa. While I'm tempted by the opening 7, we can't keep that, and then our 6 is a 1 lander, so we have to go to 5. This finds us a hand with Teferi Time Raveler, Leyline Binding, and a couple lands. After putting Teferi Time Raveler and Solitude on the bottom of the deck, the opponent starts the game. With the opponent just playing lands and passing back, I manage to get a run and 6 down on turn 2, which will help keep the cards flowing. Then the opponent follows up with a turn 3 Field of Ruin, and actually activates it in our draw step on our Triome. I believe this to be a mistake because I did mulligan to 5, and with the Ren and 6 on the table, I can now start cycling that Triumph to get a lot of value. After playing to Fairy Time Raveler and plussing it, the opponent follows up with a Cabal Coffers. With no Urborg in sight, that can't make a lot of mana yet, but this will become a problem for us down the line. And now, without any Beseju or way to interact with the opponent, we're hoping to find something off the top. With the Triumph cycling into a land, our draw step hitting a land, and the opponent activating their demolition field on our Triumph, it's getting a bit awkward with both our mana and our hand. Fortunate enough for me, after plussing on the Triumph and minusing the Teferi Time Raveler, I find an Elodomri's Call, which can either find me an Omnath or a Nissa on my next turn. I'm leaning more towards a Nissa because we have a load of land drops to make, and we can get more elementals out of our deck. Now this almost goes out the window because the opponent plays a Karn the Great Creator and gets a Liquid Metal Coating. This is a must kill card for me here because if the opponent can play a Sundering Titan, all of my lands are going to be destroyed. What's good for me here is we have the Leyline Binding on their end step and we can untap with the Nyssa and start getting some elementals. While it's tempting to ultimate the Renin 6 here, I don't think that the ultimate will do anything for us because we need to start playing our lands from hand. So instead I decide to plus the Renin 6 and use the Nyssa. Now I discover a slight problem when I use my first fetch land, and that's I only have one fetchable left in my deck. Somehow I managed to draw so many lands that I now can't fetch anything more with the Renin 6. While I do have a 1 of Endurance in the deck which I can hit, I only find an Omnath here so we can slam that and try to start to overwhelm the opponent. But things don't look too good for us though, because when we pass back the turn, the opponent has an Invoke Despair to both kill my Leyline Binding, make me sacrifice my Teferi Time Raveler, but also make me sacrifice my Nyssa. This lets them Liquid Metal Coating my Renin 6 and use Fatal Push. Now, while I commentated my deck was out of fetchables, I actually didn't quite realize that I was out of fetchables, so instead of trying to kill the Karn with something like a Fury, I went for Nyssa, which ultimately whiffed when I used my Flooded Strand. This was something I didn't think through clearly, and now I just lose to the Sundering Titan from the opponent. I could have played this game a lot tighter, but the opponent had a lot of interaction with Damnation at the end there, so I'm not even sure I could have won. Game 2 was similar to Game 1, with the opponent killing my Teferi Time Raveler and them having mana to pay for Flusterstorm, I then couldn't do anything to the Turak, which ultimately discarded two of my spells. So it was a very rough match, this deck seems very well tuned to beat 4 color control, and we couldn't really do much. Overall, was Nyssa good in this deck? Honestly, I'm not convinced, but it did top 8 the Modern Challenge, which is a very prestigious result, so I'm not sure, let me know in the comment section down below what you think. As always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Sorry for the inconsistent upload schedule in May, I have been moving house.